to you immediately, sorry. Uh, Yvonne Mipiri of the Mipiri Foundation. Hi, We'd love to hear from you. I'm just a, a doctor, a medical doctor, and for 30, almost 34 years, and I've been working in hormonal modulation, so it's my job every day. And I can assure you that what I see today has nothing to do with what I used to see 10 years ago. I used to see menopause at 50s, and now I see menopause at 40s and at 30s. I see sexual dysfunctions at 30s and at 20s, and it was a common thing to happen only to elderly people. Um, obesity has become um, an epidemic, and uh, menses, the early menses, the first menses that girls have used to be in our grandmother's time at 16, and now we see girls with eight and nine with the, the first menses. So something is changing, and we are forgetting what was normal, and we are uh, seeing many disturbances disturbances uh, in the hormonal system because something is happening and we must be aware of it. So, um, what are hormones? Hormones are chemical messengers that are released mainly by glands, mainly glands, and this has a point or not? No. Uh, that are released mainly by glands all over our bodies, and they travel through the bloodstream to target cells. And hormones control everything in our body. They control our blood pressure, our heartbeat, our water content, our mood and emotions, our blood glucose level, our um, weight, the weight we have, everything in our body, every uh, metabolic process in our body is controlled by hormones. And hormones tell cells what they have to do because they, they bind to a specific receptor in that cell. It's like a key in the lock. Uh, hormone A only fits the receptor, the specific receptor for hormone A, and the hormone B doesn't fit the receptor for that same hormone. And uh, EDCs that are endocrine uh, disrupting chemicals are chemicals that mimic the shape of that hormone, so they go to the receptor instead of the hormone, and in the receptor, they can enhance the effect of the hormone, or they can block the effect of that hormone and uh, do uh, uh, abnormal, abnormal process, sorry about my English. And uh, um, this can wreck up on the endocrine system and uh, cause severe consequences. So it will be, uh, um, um, that we could say that we had uh, a stone edge, a brown edge, an iron edge, and now we are on the plastic age. And the, the number one EDC is plastic, as a matter of fact, is plastic. Because in the composition of plastic, we have um, some materials, some molecules, like bisphenol A, but there are others, like phthalates and benzene, formaldehyde, or, or even vinyl chloride. There are many other molecules that mimic the extra dial on the receptor and so they go to the receptor of extra dial and make some changes that will make some disease in our body. And the, those molecules that are like extradial in the, in the structure, we call shadow extrogens, uh, we can find them all over uh, around us in the, our perfumes, in the shampoos, in the chemical industrial chemicals, as you know, but in many personal care products, uh, like uh, um, our our soap that we wash the hands, so we must be very very. We cannot know where they are because uh, even when there are labels, they are diminute and they are incomprehensible for for the most of the people. So we need a, a, an action at a higher level because people don't know where they are. And there is a list of more over than 85,000 of EDCs. So those are the most frequent. But we cannot know by heart all the, the names of all of them. So uh, it's almost impossible to do something um, when you don't know about this method. And if we think that only small doses won't be make any difference because at small doses only the big doses will make a difference. 
we could not be more uncorrected and outdated because uh, small doses will make a big difference because and can make big effects because when you take in consideration um, mixed effects, the level risks go up. So, especially in pregnant women where a small dose uh, won't make any difference for the mother, uh, for the baby that is formed in the uterus of the mother, it, uh, uh, and this only that chance that the mother has to, to make a good brain and the organs well formed of the baby, it's only that chance for the, the mother, and if she's uh, intoxicated with all of these things, she won't have another chance to change, uh, chance to make a, a good uh, a good. Uh, and many illnesses do to this problem, and fertility is one of them because fertility has decreased more than fifty percent in the last fifty years. It's one of the problems that I have almost every day. Uh, especially because of low sperm quality, but also by the side of the mother because of the um, uh, uh, number of endometriosis, that is the lining of the uterus outside the uterus, polykistic ovary syndromes and miscarriages. <laughs> also, male and female reproductive tract tract abnormalities has doubled in the last 50 years. Intersex and ambiguous genitalia is happening at a speed that we never saw before. before. We don't know if, it, if it is a boy or if it is a girl. Uh, it's very difficult many times to, 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 to make decisions. And also because of skew male female sex ratios changes in hormone levels, um, uh, men are getting more with more feminine bodies and, uh, and many times women also with more masculine bodies. And uh, just to you to know, Coffee and alcohol make those uh, breasts. <laughs> <laughs> and obesity, diabetes, and heart problems, that are uh, uh, the, the illnesses that we see most. One in every five children is obese, and one in every ten adults is obese. And uh, um, diabetes, that uh, we used to call diabetes type 2 as an adult onset disease. And uh, we see children at five with diabetes type two. It's incredible what we can see today, and it was not usual. And diabetes in some countries are increasing more than five percent a year. And heart attack and heart problems are the main cause of death in all the societies that is said to be civilized. I would say that have more a disease. So early puberty is another um, problem that we have, uh, as I've told you before. And this is related with breast cancer, with psychological problems, with male depression and short st stature, and, uh, and um, it's uh, quite a problem. And uh, also thyroid issues. <laughs> Every day in my consultation, I have cases of hypothyroidism <coughs> because of the disease in, in the environment, with depression, anxiety, weight uh, excesses, and other, many other problems, cancer, thyroid cancer. So because of decreasing in immune function, cancer is increasing and uh, at uh, a rate that must concern all of us. Thyroid cancer is usually that I diagnose in the routine scanner, of the, uh, just in the routine. And the testicular cancer, for you for an example, since 1943 has increased 400 times more and uh, because of environment problems. Because we know that some risks for testicular cancers are antecedent testes and uh, um, reduced anogenital distance and um, small penises. And all of these three things we can make in the animal laboratory using phthalates, that is one of the components of plastic. So we don't have any doubt that plastic is one of the main cause of cancer. And the breathing problems that children are having in adults. And also a new disease that I haven't studied 30 years ago, 40 years, almost in university. We didn't know this disease, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And now almost every kid are brought to light, I don't know in English, I would say, with this, this disease, and they are really kind of already, and they are children, and they give melatonin to babies to sleep, and they give anti-epileptics and other and and antidepressants because of the diseases. 
I think that our brand is not also a, a, a consequence of the plastic because it's incredible, you can't do this. And the, the, the biggest problems, the greatest risk is during uh, um, uh, prenatal pre, pre, pre and early postnatal where the baby is forming because it's during the, this period that the organs and the neural system is forming. So it's a, a, a period very complicated and very important for the future mothers to, to think about this and uh, program the, the, um, and the, the pregnancy. And when we do samples on the umbilical cord of the babies, we find already folates and BPH on the on the, uh, the sample. So, and a study made in Americans, uh, pregnant women, American pregnant women, we we find 99% of women with type fluorinated chemical, polybruminated that you can find in non-stick cookware, polybruminated meal ethers that you can find in the uh, plastics like your remote control TV and uh, phthalates, like in the flip-flops, that you can have it. And 99% of women already had uh, uh, these chemicals in their bodies as, as, um, as um, <laughs> Emily, <laughs> Emily was telling us. So they can come from anywhere, from the food we eat, from the water we drink, from the, 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 through the skin, from the mother to the fetus to the placenta. It's a quite a problem that we have and we all must be aware of it because uh, in 200 years, humankind will have disappeared. And if you don't think, ah, 200 years too long, think about our children and it will be the grandchildren of our children, the person that we love most. So think about it. They are everywhere. The most impressive thing for me was the plastic in the tea bag. I didn't know <laughs> the tea bag has the plastic. So, the food is the main source of chemicals because any material that comes in contact with food during the processing, the storage, the shipping, the cooking, uh, any material that comes in contact with food can contaminate food. So, it, uh, we must be, uh, even when you drink one bottle of uh, water that has BPI, and especially if it is on the heat, you have uh, uh, increase in 100, 1,600 percent in BPI. So water that you, you, maybe you know, but our weight is 60 percent water when we are adults, and 75 percent of the weight of children is composed of water. And the water is very important the quality because they can have lead, and lead causes uh, irreversible brain damage. <coughs> Uh, for our rest of our lives, lives. So the quality of water is very important. And we can find over 2,500 2, chemicals in just a glass of tap water. So all of us are responsible and we must take action at home. But it's very difficult, as I, I was telling you, how do we know where they are? Because we don't know the names, we are not uh, working in, in this nature, in this field. So um, we need a political uh, um, action. We need uh, um, politicians to, to get more involved because this problem we have for 20 years and, and uh, still only private, only no, it's not true, but many private organizations are doing many things. Uh, some with uh, like Lily and Chien are doing a great, a remarkable job in UK. And, but uh, we need a, a higher involve, involvement because we, we can't do nothing only by ourselves and alone. We need all of you. We, we, we've seen this, this shocking photographs before. So, Mithri Foundation is committed to turn the tide on plastic on our planet. Uh, I want to thank all the, the organization for, for, for having invited us and especially on behalf, behalf of my brother, Tuan Cecil, he told me to, to especially thank you. And uh, I want to thank you all for your attention and for giving my, my English. <laughs>